Hey y'all, oh, welcome to my time at Sandrock. I am so, so excited that we are finally here. I've been waiting to play Sandrock with y'all for a very, very long time. Um, I just wanted to say before we get started, a big, big thank you to the devs for the game code. And speaking of that, I did get my time at Sandrock a few days early. Uh, before it goes officially into early access. So there are a few things that might be different from your playthrough as I haven't gotten the initial update for the game. For instance, there is no voice acting currently in my game. So you might see it kind of pop in a few episodes later. And well, that's just because the copy of the game I currently have does not have voice acting. So with that all being said, let's dive into my time at Sandrock. So there is a whole bunch that is different with this game than is uh, in Portia. So we'll kind of walk through it one by one. And I promise to try to not give too, too many tips and tricks as we're going and just kind of play the game. I actually recorded this once already and I felt like I was more doing a gigantic tutorial instead of a let's play. Uh, so we're going to try a take two on this. Um, but first, the character creator, which is so so well done i was actually pleasantly surprised all things considered i'm um, let's call her jade yeah we're gonna go with jade if you've um been on with me on stream you'll know that i already have a character in eso named jade but i kind of think that she looks like jd so <clears throat> let's do that so for things like skin color stuff like that there is pretty much for anything that involves color uh, color palettes and also just well pretty much customized colors so whatever you want to do you can do which is pretty awesome um so for this i think i'm just gonna stick to mm, probably this i think that these are the colors together the interesting thing is actually the secondary color in a lot of ways feels like it plays a slightly bigger part than you'd imagine. As you can see here, this is technically the secondary, uh, but it feels like it's playing a bigger role as far as the overall hue of a color goes. So just something to bear in mind uh, as you're creating your character. So we'll do this um, and get our character set up. Um, confirm, confirm a face shape. There is actually like a whole bunch of sliders for this which i was pleasantly surprised by i did not expect to see this many sliders as you'll see as we keep going all right for the character creator <laughs> just because i was like wait what really uh but no yeah they they added a ton of sliders to this i love that chin position oh no i normally want to do it this way perfect okay cool just think i might do that and then for hair. So this is the one thing I'm actually really excited on um, is that the hair is actually in three separate sections. So you have kind of like the overall hair, then you have bangs, of course, and then ponytails. <laughs> so if you wanted, you can combine this pretty much however you want. You can make and or do whatever. And I, I actually really enjoy that. I, I think that that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, wait, they have, sp I didn't realize they had the space buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so cute. But no, I'm going to stick to the ponytail. And I tend to do this. I think that that fits the best uh, for the ponytail. You could also do that if you wanted. Um, or, I mean, literally, whatever you'd like. Uh, but I think we're going to do this. And as with Portia, um, they have the sliders too for bang length and ponytail length, which is really nice. And look at this ponytail physics. <laughs> the ponytail actually moves. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Okay, I'm, mm, I don't want to make it too long. There are some things that I noticed, um, what is it? The, um, sword and shield, the shield sits on your back for the weapon. And I think the character that I'm like testing everything out on right now, I believe their ponytail might clip through it a little, um, but I think I did almost max length ponytail on them. Actually, their ponytail might be more like that. I'm um, so <laughs> I was just going to make is a little bit shorter just because that makes more sense um now the hair color is interesting because it kind of once again works like the skin where i do feel like um the overall like the highlight color instead of like a secondary so like the highlight would be more like the secondary i feel like that plays more of a role in this than would meet the eye uh, as you can see it definitely adds a lot to it but look at it oh man that's so cool 
Um, we could also do purple instead as the secondary, which actually might be really nice. I'm um, like a red purple. Let me see. That's actually not bad. I kind of like that, but maybe more red. I just think I really just like the, the, there we go. Actually, I really like that. Let's stick with that. I wasn't even planning on that color. That's perfect. Okay. Eyebrows. There is so, so the shape of the eyebrows is literally just which way they rotate, which is fine with me. Uh, and then you can go thickness and then height. So like I said, this character creator is actually incredibly robust, all things considered. I actually feel like in some ways, this character creator is more robust than what I found in some AAA games. <laughs> Which, I don't know why I find that so amusing, but I do. Um, let's do the rotation. As you can see, you can really change uh, your character overall uh, and make them pretty unique. Which I'm going to be really curious overall to see everybody's characters um, once this game kind of fully launches and people start, well, posting them places just to see like how different everybody's um, builder is comparatively. Now the eye color, I don't know why, but the lighter eye colors almost feel a little stark, but that could just be because I'm used to them with the darker color. Um, but I think I'm personally going to do a slightly darker color this time around. Normally I try to do super bright, vibrant eyes, but for some reason with this game, I feel like the, um, like something like that would be really cool. Perfect. Actually, that's gorgeous. Yes, coming together, JD. Ears, you can change some stuff. Honestly, I don't, I think the ears are fine. And the nose is fine too for me. Um, wait, they actually have a bridge depth here. Hold on. Okay, so that's, so it's almost what that would be. So what is the bridge? Oh, I see. So almost like, interesting. And then they have a noise size and then the height and then noise length and noise width. Okay, that should be fine. We'll just kind of set it back also though. Actually, well, so the one thing to note is that once you hit confirm, if you try to undo again, it goes back to whatever you had confirmed it on. So that is just something to bear in mind going forward. I'm um, that don't hit confirm unless you're like 100% certain. Uh, only because you can't go back to what you had unless you literally go back here uh, to the beginning. And you can, by the way, zoom in and out just in case if that's something that you'd like to do. There are a bunch of different face tattoos. They're all really cute. I even like the whiskers. Um, but if you've hung around with me before, you know anything that involves a nose scar of any kind is actually my favorite. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. I actually have it on my other character, Miri. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm kind of addicted to it. They've got a variety of eyeshadow options, but honestly, for the first time in a game, I actually really like the no eyeshadow option, so I'm gonna stick with that. Um, there's also blush. The variety of options. Once again, you have two different colors for it. I'm gonna stick with no blush. I think, oh gosh, I want to say maybe around the time of like Dragon Age Inquisition. I, when that first came out, I kind of gave up on blush on characters around then. I don't know why, but that was one of those games that made me go, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need blush on my character. I think because the blush was just so like, whoa, uh, in that character creator, but. Oh, coffee is good. I am, we, the last thing that we have is lipstick to do. Um, so by default, for some reason, it's this lipstick, but this is the full. So if you want to see like your full lip size, that is probably the this one or this one would be the better options. I'm I'm probably gonna go with this, and I prefer more of a neutral lip. So I'm just gonna kind of bring both of these down in color, like more, maybe like that. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So now I can actually adjust the lips <laughs> correctly, <laughs> or the mouth rather. I'm probably bring that down a smidge, and maybe bring the height down a. Oh, I think she's really cute. Okay, I think JD is ready. So let's get started and finally adventure in to Sandrock. Oh wait, birthdays. Okay, um, let's pick stream birthday, um, which is this. Perfect. Okay, let's get started. And I will say the cutscenes in this game are so well done, especially compared to Portia. 
Portia had some cutscenes, but not quite as many as Sandrock does, even already initially. Um, and I will say I'm just very much enjoying the cutscenes overall. Um, and you'll kind of see, and I'll point them out as they happen, uh, there are some really well done, like, walking to cutscene. Like, the transitions are really well done. They almost kind of remind me of, um, if you've ever played Mass Effect 3, uh, that's almost the style uh, that they remind me of. So, where it's like action and then it swerves into a cutscene. It's super cool. But look at her! Oh, yeah, that came out so well! Yay! I'm so excited to finally play Sandrock with you guys. I've been looking forward to this game as... <sighs> Man, I want to say for over... Has it been like over a year now? I think so, which is crazy to think about. But here we are. Mm. Like, it's just so cute. There's our new best friend. <laughs> I'm like... 100% we have to become best friends with Mian. Uh, hey there, you must be Jade. I'm Mian, the other new builder. I just got here yesterday. Nice to meet you. So if you played Portia, um, and even if you haven't, I'll probably be doing a lot of comparisons, at least in the start of this Let's Play to Portia, just because, well, same devs um, and same world. So it's, it kind of fits. But in Portia, the other builder was more of a arch nemesis, <laughs> whereas here it's not and i'm actually really excited that it feels so vastly different even with just that um one thing in and itself like higgins was definitely like your mortal enemy in a lot of ways at least at the start and mian's already just starting out as a friend and that's just so nice that we're not repeating the same thing if that makes sense i'm here to take you to the commerce guild the retiring builder and the commissioner are there let's not keep them waiting follow me okay also, I am 100% obsessed with the music in this game. It's so well done. Um, the other thing is you can turn the tutorials off. I would personally turn them off normally at this point because I've already played a little bit of the beginning. Um, but I'm going to keep them on just so that way you guys can see what the tutorial pop-ups will look like and stuff like that as we're going. Howdy there, Jade. I'm Jan, president of the Sandrock Commerce Guild. Pleased to make your acquaintance, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I love him. I don't know why. He's so different than like Presley and everything else from Portia that like it's just so, so good. He's just such a I don't care, just do the commissions kind of guy. I'll be overseeing you and me in, but don't think of me as your boss. Think of me as more of a buddy that's your supervisor. This year's Mason. He's retiring, hence, you know, the whole reason for you being here and whatnot. But you knew that already. What am I talking about anyway? See that workshop there on the other side of the tracks? That used to be Mason's. Now it's all yours, ain't eh? that swell? Well, just think of all the great stuff you'll be able to make in there for our Commerce Guild. And for other people too, I guess. Well, I am now speechless. Mason, as the established builder of Sandrock, why don't you say a couple of inspiring words? Uh, well, let's not get too friendly. I mean, I'm on my way out of here. <laughs> my workshop's now yours, Jade. You may find it run down and dilapidated ill-equipped and certainly it is certainly those things but you may also find that the place has a lot of heart i believe that will suffice may you bring telesis to the land now if you'll excuse me i'm off to the blue moon there are only so many more days i'll be able to get my yak milk yak milk on he was always a bit awkward mind you Anyways, back to business. Before you start, I need to tell y'all a bit about how we work here in the desert. I know you already hold a builder's license, but things are a bit different here from what you're used to. To start with, there are too many, there aren't too many trees around, so don't go swinging your axe around too much, it's frowned upon. Anyways, but there's plenty of scrap metal and driftwood you can break apart. For that, you'll need something called a pick hammer. It's a pick with a hammer, just as the name implies. We use it not only because it's useful for breaking up rocks, but it's also durable enough to break up the old world scrap easy stuff to make as well just need to find some stone and wood and craft it at your work table why don't you two try making one for yourself you'll be needing it right away anyways when you're done just come find me in the commerce guild but you know no rush see you there true it's pretty easy to make we should be able to find stone and wood we need by just searching through junk piles on the ground near our workshop picking things up is fun hey let's go to your workshop and see what kind of machines mason left for you let me take you there. I'm already getting pretty acquainted around here so I can make sure you don't get lost. Okay. I mean, I probably wasn't going to get too lost, but then again, this is me. 
And if you've hung out with me for any amount of time on stream, you'll know that I am... I tend to get lost a lot and very easily, so it's probably good that she's showing us around. See what I mean, though? I was, like, walking and then cutscene, and it just... It flows really well, you know? I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Hmm, so kind of, kind of slim pickings. But at least he did leave you a work table. That should be all you need to get the pick hammer. You know, Sandrock is well known across the free cities for being directly on top of old world metropolis. They say some old scraps even end up here on the surface when the wind blows. Once we have our pick hammer, we can smash them up and get all the resources we need. Also, I kind of want to say something to you privately. Um, see, the reason I came to Sandrock is because it's not doing so well for itself. Everybody in the free cities knows that, but I didn't hesitate signing that contract. I thought it'd be the best way for me to make a difference in the world. I bet you feel the same way. So let's make a promise, builder to builder. Let's take Sandrock back to its glory days during our time here. Let's give it our all, okay? Phew, well, I'm off to make a pick hammer. See ya. See what I mean? Like, best friend status. She really is so sweet. Ah, uh, junk. Perfect. So the one thing I'm... To know he's to like it kind of confused me for some reason um i'm so used to like holding down buttons when you're gathering stuff actually though for this you just like tap the button and let go i i don't know if that's more of a controller thing that just came to the kbm because i am playing this on mouse and keyboard uh port but it's actually really nice that you don't have to necessarily worry about that i'm um, like holding it down the whole time and that includes with kicking trees i feel like with porsche we had to hold down the the key or like press it repeatedly here i can show you like i feel like every time like every kick you had to to hit the like whatever the interact key was and in this you don't which is pretty awesome actually it a makes life a lot easier but b it's um well it's just more convenient to be honest stone axe now the one thing i found really interesting about this game so far um let me get to my inventory a the new menus are gorgeous but also, so, like, you see how I have all the stuff in my inventory, but it doesn't go straight into my toolbar? I actually find that to be, um, really interesting that only stuff that you, like, need need goes into your toolbar. So, like, stuff that you can basically use right away. So, food, weapons, um, pick hammer, axe, stuff like that, um, will go into your quick bar. But otherwise, like, materials and stuff don't, which makes it... Mm, I guess it depends on what kind of person you are, if you like that or not. Um, but for me, as somebody who doesn't necessarily like a lot of stuff in my quick bar, unless I absolutely need it, it's a very nice kind of upgrade of sorts. And I actually wish more games would do that. Um, so this is the tutorial for the workshop. All right, so we'll craft our first. Awesome. And we have our pet camera now. Okay, I'll get the rope. Um, and then we'll take care of that because you can't fix this. Okay, so we've got the furnace. We've got that. And then we'll get the wood scrap here. It is an interesting concept, though. Normally, when you play like farming sim games or building games, anything like that, most resources are actually pretty abundant, right? Like Stardew Valley, there are plenty of trees. If you played um, Story of Season or anything like that, there are genuine generally rather i'm um, plenty of things to to get for resources so you can build but with this you're kind of running into the issue of i love the fact that you can see the train go by um you're running into this problem where trees aren't actually as prevalent as you would think all right so you have to kind of get creative on how you get a lot of the different resources and i actually really appreciate that because it makes this different than every other farming sim game we've played um, it, just because there are so many, this this genre is my, one of my favorites outside of like just straight up RPGs. Um, but at the same time, I do always really appreciate when devs try to do something a little bit different or just a little bit outside the norm um, to keep it interesting. All right, let's go talk to Jan and drop off, or well, not drop off, but show him I can make a pick hammer. Jan, I need to talk to you and also drink coffee while I talk to you. Hmm. Now that's a nice looking pick hammer. It's the soul of a desert builder. Never lose it. But if you do, now you know how to build another one, I suppose. Well, next, let me tell you about the recycler. It's another indispensable tool for a desert builder. It's a machine that's synonymous with make do. Once it's made, you can put the scrap you collect with your pick hammer into the recycler to get all kinds of other useful items. 
You can construct the recycler on your assembly station. Here's the diagram. Just look it up in your workshop handbook. You can also open it, open to it on the control panel at the assembly station. And don't worry so much, you'll figure it out. Come by the Commerce Guild when you finish. So the recycler is... Like if you played Portia and you know how like you had to build like three stone furnaces right away. I feel like the recycler is almost the equivalent of that where there still is a furnace and everything and the furnace is important. But I feel like the recycler is that end all to be all at least at like the start of the game it is that end all to be all resource where you need it or i shouldn't say resource i should say machine um so you're gonna need it for a lot of things um you basically pick up scrap and then the recycler turns that scrap into what you need so you don't necessarily have to worry about not being able to chop down trees because you have a recycler so you'll pick up wood scrap and then you can put it in the recycler and it'll give you wood back if that makes sense so we have to build um a recycler pretty much asap as they're saying but if you're somebody that is watching this before you purchase the game or you're new to the game and you're looking for some help the first and probably most important thing i could say is to build two recyclers <laughs> like from the get-go i the when i was playing on my test build i'm just kind of learning the game and stuff like that because i'm working on a couple other videos as i record this as well to get out at launch um there's like the recycler is something that i regretted not building sooner just because it just does come in handy like there comes a point pretty quick within the first few days where you're just like oh i want to break down my stone and my wood um scrap so that's why i would say if you can focus on building two i'm at least asap even if you don't do two right away get a second one as quickly as possible because it will come in handy the other really cool thing about this game is that i'm um, the machines normally in porsche at least to, if you got like the upgraded version of a machine you had to just build the new one you couldn't necessarily upgrade the old one um but with this game the cool thing is once you get the blueprint that you need um to build like the higher end one you can then just well upgrade all of your stuff to it so if you already have the blueprint for like the upgraded recycler and you have a recycler built, you can then just, well, upgrade your current recycler to it. So it's nice because I don't feel like anything's going to be wasted in this game, which honestly is pretty cool. Um, a lot of times in these like building games, as you start to get new stuff, it can feel like some of the older stuff that you worked really hard for in the beginning because resources are so rare. It can almost feel like you, I don't want to say like you wasted your time, but it almost feels like maybe a little bit you wasted your time. Um, so this game definitely does a good job of, at least at the start, trying to balance that. You need these things, but you also want to plan for the long term. All right, so we're just going to keep going. Um, there's one resource I keep picking up, the Dina's Dinas. Oh man, that, that resource. I don't know why. I have such a, like, at least at the start, I've had such a hard time getting it. And it's kind of one of the most important resources in some ways. Um, It's used to make the grinding saws and a couple other things. And I just keep finding that I never have enough. And that could just be that I'm not farming the right resources for it. Um, But that's like one of those things that for some reason just feels so very precious. <laughs> I don't know what the equivalent to it would be. Uh, to be honest, I thought I saw a, a stone um, out here. Hold on. I know I saw that one over there, but I thought there was another like flat stone that I could harvest out here. Maybe not. Okay, so we'll do this. I do know that it generally comes from like gravelly kind of things. You know what it almost reminds me of? I don't know why, but like if you played Porsche, the bloodstone, oh, like bloodstone was used for like a variety of things in the beginning, but it was so not hard to get. It was one of those things you didn't even realize you needed. And then by the time you got it, you were like, uh, wait, I need more. And like, so then you spent like three or four in-game days just trying to get bloodstone. Okay, so let me see what I can make here. We can do two. Perfect. And we can do one. Am I good there? I think so. Yes, perfect. So we have everything that we need. We'll do that. Uh, this and grinding saws. Perfect. Okay. So we have our first machine. All right. So here's the recycler. There is a variety of different fuels that you can use for it, but I, 
don't use the power. Like I have, I'm, I'm trying very hard not to use my power stones. The dregs is something that you can use um, to fill up your machines and you get it fairly regularly. So that's just what I've been doing to start. Let's do, oh uh, no. Okay, I uh, accidentally forgot to add in all. Here we go. So this is what I meant, by the way, by the upgrade. So see how it says upgrade diagram from research center. So once you get that upgraded diagram, you can then use this to upgrade the machine. So you go from recycler to civil recycler, which is amazing. And do I have any water? I have no water. <laughs> the, so this is like a whole other mechanic that as we go through the game, we'll talk about it together. But it's an interesting mechanic because you are in the desert. Water is precious and things get overheated very, very quickly and very easily. I actually don't want to say very quickly because I haven't really run into that. When I played the demo, I ran into that a little bit more. But it is something that you just, you kind of have to like pay attention to. And I find that interesting. I'm, oh, Amira, hi. Oh, you must be the new builder. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Amira. I have the best selection of pottery and decor in town. Mason probably sold everything in his workshop when he moved out. So why don't you take this? It's my welcome gift. Thank you. So nice of her. Oh, hi. A stray pitch noise owl nests and cacti. I love it. It's also a cat running around. I don't know if I'll get to find him today, but there he is. Um, his name is Captain, and he's part of the Civil Corps, and I love him. Hi, Elsie. Uh, oh, heck, another Taurus. Or, howdy. Uh, I'm afraid I must be on my way. The new workshop owner? Well, shoot. Now, why didn't you say so? I'm Elsie. Pleased to meet you. Sorry, I didn't recognize you, partner. I thought all builders were boring old geezers like Mason. <laughs> Mason can hear that. There he is. You see him? Captain. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Come say hi to me. Look at how grumpy is mouse grabber extraordinaire. Meow. I haven't gotten any points to them or anything, but I'm here for it. I'm in love with him. <laughs> He's like the cutest thing. Oh, and then there's Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Can I just talk to you for a minute? Uh, Desert Guide Town Mascot. That's it. Sorry, there's... We got an owl, a camel, and a cat all roaming around. And I love that. Uh, venti. I love Yakmo milk. Always order the biggest cup where they got. Glug, glug, glug. Uh, down the hatch. It makes my work so much better. Oh, let's go in. I want to go say hi to Owen. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Owen. And then there's Gracie here. And Hugo is here. Owen! Hey, you're one of the new builders. Pleasure to meet your to make your acquaintance. I'm owner. I'm Owen oh, owner. I'm Owen. I run the Blue Moon Saloon. You hungry? I have a couple sample dishes. I know you can work up an appetite after spending a day in the ruins. Drop by any time. I'll be around. Honestly, he's one of the ones that I'm just like, are we gonna romance him? <laughs> he seems so sweet and he wants to feed everybody, and given the channel name, it just feels appropriate. You're the new builder in town, or was someone else? Oh, that's right. There's two of you. Me and, and you must be Jade, the other one. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm Hugo, the one and only blacksmith in town. If you need to buy construction materials, upgrade parts for your machine, or obtain a top-of-the-line weapons, I'm all you got. But I promise I'm the best. Just check this out. This here is like me. Iron tough. That's the quality I'm talking about. Two copper bars so early. By the way, I'm not rushing over to talk to Jan because he's closed anyways at this point, so might as well um go around and meet people. Say hi. Hi, Grace. Newcomer, eh? That's good. We need all the help I we can get. I'm Grace. Top. Stop by for a meal at the saloon sometime. I'll do my best to make some things edible. Thanks, Grace. And then I think if I remember correctly. Yes, there's a chest here. So there are chests scattered out. Um, throughout the town like there was in Portia. But the one interesting thing in this game versus Portia is that all the chests can be broken down that I found so far into other materials uh, or just in, at least into wood scrap, which is actually really nice because like I said, wood is one of those more rare resources. So the fact that they'll let you do that is just a really nice like little gift kind of thing. I know it's weird to think of it that way, but that is how I think of it. Um, all right, so let's... See if there's anybody else. Oh, he's art. And then that's, I think that's Matilda. I'm still trying to learn everybody's name. I'm <laughs> for my own personal sanity. Uh, greetings, my child. Welcome to Sand Rock. I'm Matilda, minister of this here town, Church of Light. Oh, this he here town's Church of Light. We're like a big family here, and I just know that you're going to fit in. Okay. 
She's actually really nice. Uh, RVO. Ah, you're the new builder, aren't you? Charmed to be sure. I run by the stairs, the only general store in town. Nevertheless, I think you'll find our price is hard to beat. That's right. Matilda asked me to help you out. Being new and all, I thought of something I think you're going to love. For the next seven days, everything in my store will be 50% off. Just for you, of course. Oh, isn't that really nice? 50% off of pretty much everything in the store. Hmm. Uh, no need for introductions. I know who you are. <laughs> the way he says that, I know who you are. I'm Pastor Miguel. I guess you could say I'm the brains behind this little operation. Does he mean like Sandrock as a whole or? I trust you'll bring Telesis to Sandrock and beyond. I believe he also works for the Church of Light. Um, so it's just, it's, it is interesting. I uh, Peck? Ba, your boss is blah. Blah, blah, blah. Your boss yawns all right, an all right guy. He understands the art of extended lunch breaks. Ah, uh, does yawn really understand any? I mean, I could see yawn understanding that. Hey, I'm Unser, a member of the local civil corps. There are dangerous elements all around town, such as the criminal gang led by Logan or the aggressive Geeglers. You should be careful. Okay. He used to believe another romance option. Actually, we can check and see who is romance options real quick so this is upgraded from um porsche i actually really like this whole system so like for instance they are giving you now like they're I, they're calling it social network but it's just i really enjoy knowing like okay this like these two are related like so this is his sister and vice versa and then you're kind of over here and you just know them so as that so you can kind of see how some are going to expand um, I actually really enjoy that. I don't know why, but I kind of geeked out for a few minutes when I first saw that feature, <laughs> which I know is really weird, but this is me we're talking about. So um, you can also see like their preferences, uh, perks as you upgrade them um, in different levels. Then you can see your hearts with them, a little bit about them um, and stuff like that. And the other cool thing is you can now... Um, sort by buddy best friend family sweetheart um so it's just really nice that they have all these different categories so pretty much for the most part it'll be it should hopefully hopefully be easy to find people <laughs> when you need to like look for them in the long run Burgess, hello new builder <laughs> he's stuck behind the tree it's wonderful to have you here amongst our desert flock i'm burgess chief safety inspector of the sandrock chapter of the church of light I mostly patrol the oasis, and if that water level moves even a centimeter, boy, you would better believe I'll let everyone and their mother know about it. I don't doubt it. If you watched my demo let's play, you'll know that I, for one, got yelled at I, by Burgess. Big time. Um, I didn't realize I was cutting down a tree I shouldn't be cutting down. I'm... Um, because I was still like learning the game and I thought certain trees like way, 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 way out were fine, but apparently they're not. Oh, right, so he showed up at my house. I think it was. And um, no, I definitely got scolded. I uh, definitely did not know if I was going to survive that or not, uh, but I did luckily, but still kind of terrifying. So just don't get on Burgess's bad side. <laughs> As a heads up. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was actually kind of terrifying and hilarious. I uh, furniture can place anywhere you create in the, okay. Oh no. Do I have room? Hopefully. Okay, I think we do. Okay, can I not? Okay, so I got that. I'm um, inventory. I think we're good for right now. You can buy individual. You need 10 gold to unlock next slot. Okay. I think it's cool though that you can do individual slots for unlocking things, but it is bedtime. Um, there's a little bit more to the bedtime mechanic than we had in past games where if you go to bed too late, um, I think it's anytime after basically like 1 a.m., uh, you wake up with dark circles under your eyes. <laughs> and I've done that a time or two and I actually scared myself a lot because I was like, did something happen in character creator that I didn't know about? Uh, but it turns out, no, I went to bed far too late, three days in a row, and she had like these mega dark circles. So we're going to go to bed now to avoid that and see uh, what kind of trouble we can get into tomorrow.